Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the uh, Sherlock Vlogs. So, um, the new episode, the new season, our series, British TV show, series four of Sherlock debuts uh, January okay. January 1st, yeah. Um, it's been a year since the last episode, which was the Christmas special. Not for me. And it's been three years since season three. Um, spoilers, spoilers throughout- so three years since season three? Whoa, okay. Spoilers, spoilers throughout all of these vlogs. We're going to be getting into detail into each one and um, probably going to be jumping around a little bit too. So if you haven't seen Sherlock yet, uh, watch along with us. Uh, as always, watch episode one before you watch the vlog and so on and so forth. Um, we're actually going to finish this series, unlike Gilmore Girls and all the other ones I've started, because there are ten Sherlock episodes. It's been going on for about a decade. There are ten Sherlock and episodes. And I've already seen them all. Mm hmm. <laughs> Which is usually the reason why. So uh, we're going to be rewatching some of it uh, before we jump into season four, but I've seen it all a bunch of times, and the first couple seasons aren't, well, they're still good, very good, but like, you don't want to watch all of that shit. It gets better and better. The yes. more you go along, the so, better it gets. Um, so, I, I, I didn't like rewatch the, the pilot episode for this vlog, but I've seen it enough times that I can do it. Rachel's seen it once, however, so we're going to do something that, like, the whole impetus of this series, Rachel and George, is that we'd watch something together, and I would let her explain the plot. <laughs> So, uh, uh, what is the first episode of Sherlock? The first episode, we get to see 221B, Baker Street. You remember the title? Um, yes. Uh, a study in pink. Hey! <laughs> I pay attention to sometimes. Study in pink. Especially when I really like something and I really like Sherlock. Yeah. Um, but By the way, I'm drinking a Kentucky Mule and she's got wine. So, I'll Cheers! Go. Cheers. So, the very first time I watched this episode, actually, I was here. And mm -hmm. my favorite thing about Sherlock is, like... Maybe not my favorite thing. One of the things I hate about it the most <laughs> is that sometimes I just get lost. Yeah, they can be a little complex. But I, I, I remember to study in pink because, because like, I would be like, George, can you pause it for a second? And then I'd have him explain, and explain what what's going on. So They're also, um, they're 90 minute episodes. And like, I, Rachel, I was like, Rachel, you're going to fucking love the show. You have to watch it. But uh, she was like, I guess, okay. Like, is it long? And I was like, no, no, there's only like nine episodes, 10 episodes. She's like, oh, okay. And then we started it. And she was like, how the fuck long is this? Because each episode is an hour and a half, so... It's really hard for me to sit still for that long. Each season is essentially a trilogy of movies. So, uh, we meet Watson. We meet Watson. He's got PTSD. PTSD, yeah. I didn't even know. It started really dark, and I was like, is this the right show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we meet Sherlock shortly after that, and he's weird. Great character introduction. He is beating a corpse with a writing prop. That's how we first oh. meet Sherlock. Because he wants to determine how long after death bruises can occur yeah. in order to acquit somebody else. It makes sense. Science. I, mean, I always understand what he's doing and why he's doing it, but... Mm -hmm. um, he's a dick. He's an arrogant ass, <laughs> And I love him. <laughs> yeah, me too. And they end up living together. Correct, because John needs a roommate. Yeah, well, and like, Sherlock needs a roommate. It's not like anyone ever ter ter told Sherlock that, though. That John needed a roommate? I don't think so. No, what Wasn't happened? Wasn't that his first like, yeah, scene no. of, like, deductively yeah. reasoning yeah, his, something his, out? His, John's old friend was like, um, you need a roommate. And John's like, who would want to have me as a flatmate? And the guy's like, funny, that's the second, you're the second person today that said that to me. <laughs> and then they walk in and they meet Sherlock, um, and Sherlock's immediately like, okay, well, I play the violin, does that bother you? If we're going to be flatmates, you should know. And like, how do you know that we're going to be flatmates? And he's like, because this morning I mentioned to that guy that I needed a roommate, and here you are, I made it a met before, and he's gone to college before, so clearly you're going to blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and Sherlock does all that stuff. Um, we meet Molly, who isn't really much of a character yet, but I love her. Oh, yeah. Clearly has a, she wears the lipstick, I think that's that bit. Where that she, scene, you look, yeah. You look different. You wearing lipstick? No. Oh. And then later on she takes it off. What happened to lipstick? Oh, I washed it off. Huh, pity. I thought it did, thought, thought it wonders for your face. He's such a dick. He just has an understanding emotions at all, obviously. Because no, that she's way worse later. A high functioning like, sociopath. Awful scene at Christmas. At Christmas, which is that's we got a while for that one. That's season two. Um, anyways, this episode is the study in pink. It's about um, they find a lady who is wearing all pink with pink nail polish and a pink suitcase. And uh, there's been a series of, well, suicides, remember? Mm, ooh, oh, this episode? With the pills? And the pills. No, I don't like this one. <laughs> this one's scary. It's a bummer, yeah. So there's a series of parent suicides. Um, Sherlock is finally involved because finally something is different. There's a note, or the beginning of a note. She scratched something in the floor. Rachel! Well, Raka. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rachel. Rachel! Rachel! Uh, <laughs> Um, Sherlock has a limp, and he's bought, like, it's got this, this great moment where they're gonna live together, and Sherlock's heading off to do, like, to go investigate the, you know, he's so excited, like, oh my god, a murder, like, yay, finally something interesting is happening. Yeah. And he comes back in and he says to Watson, um, so you were, uh, you were in the military, you, you've seen your share of action, and he goes, my share, everyone else's share, like, more than enough action, more than enough for a lifetime of violence and horrificness. 
And Sherlock's like, you want to see some more? And John's like, oh god, yes. <laughs> because he's so fucking bored with civilian life, and he's yeah. got this psychosomatic limp. Yep. Um, which yes, it's still. Remember how the remember how it's revealed that that limp actually is psychosomatic? Yes, because at some point they're in this chase, right? They're eventually they track it down to a cab, and so they're at a restaurant. Sherlock's not eating anything, which you he, mentioned he, that he, he doesn't eat. Does. Yeah. Um, and they like the cab's going away, and so Sherlock's like, "We gotta go," and John leaves his cane there. Mm -hmm. Did I get it right? Yeah. Yes. And there's a full foot chase, and at the end of it, they're like, "He was like, what, what was that supposed to prove?" Well, nothing really. I mean. It proved that our guy is stupid enough to show up and we were on the right track. But also, there's a second thing. <laughs> what? <laughs> You'll find out in three seconds. Or no, uh, you're going to tell, uh, tell me what the second thing we learned from that chase is? No. Well, who is? The man at the door. Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> and it's the guy who owns the restaurant where they were eating before the chase started. He's there to deliver the cane. Yeah, John's and John's like, like, oh, right, fucking cool. Take it. I, don't, I don't need that anymore. Uh, the whole thing culminates in, well, Sherlock, we find out, we find out Sherlock's a drug addict. Mm -hmm. Which is a big bummer, but like it's it's weirdly like doesn't fit his character, but so wait, does. when did we see that? Well, he's like they, the police come into his apartment. And they're doing a raid on his apartment, on his flat, and they're looking for drugs. And Watson's like, really, this guy who met him, he would never do drugs. And Watson, and Sherlock's like, mm -hmm. like it's part of his character. Oh, I guess throughout. I never yeah, that. It's part of his character throughout the books too. Is that he was a drug addict, which obviously yeah. you've seen later. I mean, on. Knew, it's a big deal. I knew later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I remember in that episode, I was like, wait. He's a drug addict. Yep, and he's, okay. he's trying to quit smoking, so he's got three nicotine patches on at once. Yeah. Because he wants to get the snaps all firing. The, all the stimulants. Um, so Sherlock, Sherlock figures out what the hell's going on. The whole thing is like, so who, like, there's suicides, so like, but the thing is, they were all, no one was like dragged away or beaten. So like, who do you trust? Who do you see? Who could operate around the city and you wouldn't ever really see them? And, and he's in the background for a yeah, long yeah. ass time. And it's, it's a cab driver. Yep. Um, so Sherlock figures that out. Then he figures out that like, He's got the dead woman's phone, and the cab driver's texting him, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he ends up going off with the cab driver to the episode's climax. Before we get to there, however, we have all these these weird allusions to somebody, some dude keeps tracking down Watson. And he's like... Oh, yeah. I thought it, I could have sworn it was going to be Moriarty. Yes. But, like, it's obviously not a bad guy. It turns out to be... What's his fucking name? Mycroft. I almost said Mordecai. No. <laughs> I was like, that's not right. Mycroft Holmes. Mycroft. Sherlock's older brother is um, also very smart and working for the British government and British intelligence. But he's also weirdly protective of his shithead little brother. Yeah, but, like... like he loves his little there's brother. There's that scene in the parking garage. Yeah, 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 Like, when they first... When Watson's like, all right, well, I'm... Like, yeah, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And then um, they go through this whole thing and, like, I'm like, oh, this this guy's bad. Like, we don't know that it's Mycroft yet. Yeah. But at the end, John is like, wait, you really do care about him? That is the, wait, that's your brother? Brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I told, like, yeah, that's, he's like, why do you care so much about Sherlock Holmes? I care for him. Yeah. More than he would, more than he would be willing to realize. But he says it's so creepily yeah, yeah. where you're like, ugh. That thing too, <laughs> like, like, so are you a friend of Sherlock's? And that, that's where they lay in the big theme of the whole series, which is Sherlock and friend, friendship in general. Watson says to Mycroft, who he thinks is maybe this bad guy thing, who we might think is Moriarty. Um, what are you, a friend of Sherlock's? And he's like, can you imagine Sherlock having friends? I'm the closest thing that he could ever have. What's oh. that? An enemy. <laughs> and um, when they go out to like investigate and Watson like tries to help out with his limited, not limited, like he's got a great medical mind, but Sherlock's way smarter than him. Sherlock introduces him as, this is my associate, Dr. Watson. And in the second episode, which we'll get into in the next video, same thing, they go to a crime scene and uh, Sherlock says, this is my friend, Dr. Watson. And Watson's like, uh, I'm not his friend. <laughs> <laughs> but it's clear, like, once Sherlock attaches to somebody, and the reason why Sherlock attaches to somebody is that John totally murders a dude for him at the end of this episode. Is it the dude with the pills? Yeah. So go ahead and explain. What's the what's the climax? Oh, what, what is, man. What's the deal with what's the pills? What's the, the cab driver's name? I have no idea. Okay, well, there's this cab driver and, and Sherlock, and they're in a library, I think. They're in this big room. Yeah, they're in some kind of college, high school room. Yeah, they're alone, and they're at a table, and... The guy sets out two pills, and it's really dramatic, and there's a lot of interesting dialogue that I can't remember. <laughs> but basically, it's like, one of these will kill you, and one of these will not. Essentially, it's right. that scene from Princess Bride. Remind me again? <clears throat> the man in black tracks down the scene, you know, inconceivable, and there's, uh -huh. like, the, the wine glasses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally, it's that thing, where it's like, one of these is poison, one of these is not, they're completely undetectable, they're exactly the same. Yeah. One of them will kill you, one of them will not. Yeah, yeah, And the way he's been killing all these people is... He makes them at gunpoint. He forces them to choose a pill. And he's right every time because yeah. he knows how to read people. And uh, Sherlock is like, uh-huh. 
you think you know how to read people, and then Sherlock starts to lay into the guy. Yeah. And he's like, your clothes, they're old, but well, like, they're, they're well worn. Clearly you don't care about the future. And then like, he diagnoses the guy as like dying of some disease. Oh and yeah. And he's like, there's a picture of the, the guy's kids. car. Yes. Yeah, I remember that now. So what's been going on is this guy um, is a cab driver who thinks he's, he's terminally, he's doomed. Like he's got he's something. He's terminally ill. He's got a, an aneurysm that's gonna pop in his brain any day. Every day could be his last. Ugh. Um, and Moriarty reaches out to him. Uh, well, he says first, someone reaches out to me. You know, someone who is, you think you're the only one in the world who's interested in these kind of crimes? Well. Somebody reached out to me and they're like, what I, why I did this, why I killed these people was because I've been told that when I die, uh, my family, my children are going to be providing for. But why? Why would they do this? Because someone's interested in you, Sherlock Holmes. And that's where you get the first hint. That it's someone. That it's someone. And then Sherlock's like, all right, bye. And he's going to leave. But and then, then the cab driver. He, but then but he's like, well, don't you want to know? Uh -huh. Don't you want to know if I got it right? And of course, that's like Sherlock's kryptonite right there, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Like, you something. motherfucker, yeah. <laughs> So Sherlock chooses a pill and he's just about to eat it when, and by the way, while all this intense conversation is going on, John is running through town trying to track down the cell phone. And he finds a building and he's running through the building, but then like you discover that he's in the building next yeah. door. He kicks open a door and runs to a room and then you realize, yeah, it's like across the courtyard. He's in the background of this and he's, and he's screaming, screaming but, Sherlock! Then, but then it's in the window mm -hmm. of the building next door. <laughs> so yeah, so just as Sherlock nice. is about to eat the pill, Gunshot, blam, the guy goes down, and Sherlock immediately like steps on the guy's bullet wound, and he's like, tell me who told you to do this? What's the name? And he's like, Moriarty! Yeah. And Sherlock's like, I don't know who that is, but all the Sherlock fans are like, oh shit, Moriarty. Yeah. Um, How does Sherlock not know who Moriarty is? I thought you told me that they went to school together. No, 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 that's, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> um, okay. No, 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 he, I mean, I guess he, I guess he did, like, they went to the same school, but they were in different years. Okay. Um, that's, that's an episode three. Okay. Um, so that guy dies. <laughs> the police come, Officer Lestrade, who I love that character, the inspector. Oh, yeah. Who's like, always like, God, I have to fucking ask Sherlock for help. There's a really weird, funny blowjob joke. Oh, that, yes, there is. That yes. episode. Where, like, something about the knee, like, her knees. <laughs> the knees. Just going by the steady on knees, must have scrubbed, scrubbed his floor. <laughs> so, yeah, real quick, just like, get the, just to get the characters of the series out of the way. There's Sherlock and Watson, obviously. There's Molly, who we talked about. She works at the morgue. Yeah. And um, she's got a massive crush on Sherlock, and she'll let him in to use the lab and um, get around dead bodies, whatever he needs to do, because she's completely ensorcelled with him. Uh, on the police side of things, there's Inspector Lestrade, who is like, I don't want to call Sherlock, but I fucking have to. And the way we meet him is, he's giving a press conference about, like, no, nothing here is the same. There's nothing in common. These are not murders. And everyone in the room gets a text yeah. that just says, wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Besides him is like his deputy, his second in command is a woman who is like, just fucking hate Sherlock. And she has this line to John where she's like, uh, don't hang out with him, with Mr. Watson, whoever you are, because Sherlock doesn't have friends. He uses people and he's a fucking sociopath. And yeah. someday he's going to get sick of solving crimes and he's going to start to create his own. That's what she believes. She believes she believes it. Then there's the guy who's the other forensic specialist. He's the guy who examines crime scenes and <laughs> yeah. Sherlock hates his fucking guts. Yeah. <laughs> so when they go to the crime scene, he sees that dude. And he's like, um, I can tell you didn't sleep at your own apartment last night. Oh, how could you possibly know that? Someone told you. No, I can tell by your deodorant. <laughs> um, I can tell... By, uh, you're wearing the same... What is it? I can tell because you're wearing somebody... Like, you're wearing deodorant. You're wearing... That's right. You're wearing her deodorant. This is men's deodorant. Yes, I know. But she's wearing it as well. So it turns out that the other oh. woman and him with the night is like, don't worry. I'm sure that with your wife out of town, she's going to be able to cook you a meal, maybe do some light cleaning. And go on by the state of your knees. She probably scrubbed your floors. <laughs> So he's a total fucking dick. Um, at the end of the episode... I love this show. At the end of the episode, we get one of the favorite... Uh, to all my Tumblr fans, by the way, uh, everybody on Facebook, thank you, this is what I look like. I run that Tumblr page. I'll be updating it more, but I'm going to post this for you guys, too. Uh, for the Tumblr fans out there, there's a lot of recurring bits that everyone loves. One of them is Shock Blanket, which they really only reference once, and it's in this episode, which is... Sherlock has got a blanket around him after everything's gone down at the end, and the inspector comes over and he's like... Sherlock, you have to stay there. Why don't I blank it? Because you're in shock. I'm not in shock. And it's like, okay, well, who do you think did the shooting? And Sherlock McDuffie is like, oh, okay, somebody would have, this is a marksman's aim. Must be someone with military history, blah, blah, blah. Someone who probably knew me, knew the other thing. And then he sees John lurking out behind the police line. He's like, oh, wait. Uh, and he realizes John saved his life. And he's like, you know what? Never mind. What I just told you, not at all true. Because he doesn't want to implicate John. <laughs> and then Sherlock starts to get up and walk away. And the inspector's like, Sherlock, we need you here. And he's like, I'm fine. I have a blanket. <laughs> And then Sherlock joins John, and they, they chit-chat, and they, I think they make a bunch of, they make some really off-color joke about a dead man, and Watson's like, you can't make that joke, he's dead. 
But you see, their, you see their friendship start to form. And then Mycroft shows back up. And he's like, Sherlock, this is the guy. And he's like, oh yeah, that's, that's my brother. Brother? Wait, what? Brother? I told you I cared about him. You actually do care about your brother. We go the whole episode without that happening? Yeah, it's Not the very sure. end. And then Sherlock and Watson walk away, and they do like the slow motion, the theme, the awesome musical thing kicks up. And then it cuts back to Mycroft and his like super hot British secretary thing that John flirts with throughout oh, the episode. Yeah. And keeps getting rejected. And he goes, uh, I think we better increase Sherlock's, um, and Sherlock's, um... Security clearance. Not security clearance, but like, when you're spying on somebody. Uh, yeah. you better, we better increase Sherlock's, um... Intelligence reports. Whatever it is. CIA! <laughs> it wouldn't be CIA. No, we better increase written. Sherlock's. Um... What do you call it when you're spying on someone? You know, like, um, spying, or like yeah. intruding, or, uh... Um, um... um fuck. Anyway, we better increase his um, monitoring is close the closest I can get to. We better increase the amount of time we spend monitoring Sherlock Holmes. And she's like, if "You're a spy. Who's monitoring you? How is that a synonym?" Sherlock isn't a spy. Exactly. Why would people Mycroft be is a spy? Why are they monitoring? Because Mycroft is a spy, and because Sherlock is a fucking brilliant mind, and they may need him on occasion. Mm -hmm. Plus, now Sherlock's got this new buddy of his. Yeah, they don't know anything about John. Um, plus, Mycroft knows who Moriarty is. It hasn't been revealed yet. We don't know that he knows, but Mycroft knows who Moriarty is. Maybe that's what I was getting confused with. So um, they said we better increase Sherlock's, um, you know, observation. We have to vouch off observe him more. And she's like, "Why? Because my little brother has a friend, and clearly they're good together." And then there's that like roll credits moment where he's like, "Sherlock Holmes and John Watson." Well, we'll just have to see how this develops, and then the episode ends. Um, so that's it. That's the first episode. Um, thoughts? I love it. I loved it from the very beginning. That episode freaks me the fuck out, though. The, op the very first thing you see is a guy getting off of a plane and then taking a pill and crying. Yeah. Like, that's the first, like, 15 it's seconds. Stuff in there. And Rachel was like, oh my god, what is this, George? And I was like, it's awesome, shut up. <laughs> like, I promise it's really funny. <laughs> it was, it's intense, though. Yeah, it, it is. It is really intense. Like, the way that, it's not just, like, typical, like, I'm gonna shoot you and you're murdered. It's psychological. Which oh. makes it all the more interesting, but it is pretty terrifying. I got one for you that I didn't, I didn't learn until Tumblr, so thank you, Tumblr. Um... The woman in pink is a media type that Sherlock figures all this out. She's a media type who's in town for a little while, blah, blah, blah. And she left a note. Why is she the only one left a note? Well, in the opening press conference scene, they show all the members of the press sitting in front of Lestrade, and there's a woman in pink. That's why she was in town. She came from out of town to London to research the story on all the fucking suicides. Oh, damn. Which is why when she's killed, she knew enough to try and leave a note, because she wants them to solve the mm, good stuff. Uh, the other thing is, the head writer of the show, Stephen Moffat, is also one of the head writers on um, Doctor, Who. Doctor Who. Can you feel that at all? Does it have a similar kind of mean spirit? Because Sherlock is very much like, how much can we make our audience feel like, oh, <laughs> how can we, how much can we hurt our main character, particularly by season three? That makes sense, yeah, by Doctor Who. Does it do that too? Because I think Stephen Moffat was the biggest uh, writer for okay, I for Tennant and Smith, I believe. Yeah, uh, like the two that like, really with launched it. Chris Eccleston. Yeah, Eccleston, Smith. And Tenet, I believe, are the first three. Yeah, so Tenet's arc, for those of you who watch Doctor Who, is just like, it rips your heart out by the end of it because of and all I, of the things. Yeah. Um, and I believe so that yeah, was Moffat. So they definitely know how to play with our emotions and like make us feel things. Yeah. Um, did you feel going in, like, when you finished that episode, did you already understand why I loved it so much? Were you like, well, this is fun? No, I, well, I didn't understand, like, why, he, yeah, I understood. I immediately wanted to watch it, more mm -hmm. of it. I was hooked, and then kind of, you know, we'll get into it in the second video, but the next one's not that great. Yeah, episode two is kind of, it it's my least my, favorite episode. It kind of killed my buzz and made me not watch it for a while. It takes forever. Because um, that first one was so good. And, like, the pace is really fast. Yeah, and there's a lot of repetitive kind of cliche. It's very Batman, the next episode. Um, so anyway, I love this show. My mother got me into it. Um... I, I'm big. I'm a I'm a huge friendship kind of guy. Like those are my favorite themes in movies. Uh, when when friends come together and fall apart and like okay, fucking real quick, Captain America: Civil War, which I won't spoil too much because you haven't seen it. Okay. Uh, but in the trailer, in the trailer for that movie, you know they're gonna fight. There's a moment in the trailer where Captain America says of another character, he's talking to Iron Man and he says to another character, Tony, I'm sorry, he's my friend. And Tony inside the Iron Man suit is like, so was I. And right there in the trailer, I was like, oh my god, best friends fighting, <laughs> like. And the, ah, so um, the idea that Watson is a broken man with PTSD who is bored by normal civilian life and needs somebody as batshit crazy. He needs that danger and he finds that in Sherlock. Plus he's the only guy who like kind of enjoys Sherlock's amazing gift. Everyone else thinks Sherlock's a fucking prick. 
And Watson's like, this is amazing, the way you can, like, diagnose. So the fact that he finds a friend, the fact that Sherlock... Put up with his arrogance. The fact that Sherlock, who's probably never had a friend, ever. Yeah. Except for a dog, which we'll get to. Oh, Redbeard. Um, the fact that Sherlock has finally found someone that he can brag to and that he can respect and... Yay. <laughs> 2 2 one b Baker Street. All of the things. The game is on, John. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's episode one, uh, the lady... Not the lady in pink. A Study in Pink, which is a reference to the very first Arthur Conan Doyle Sherlock story, which was called A Study in Scarlet. <laughs> oh yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch, who is like Doctor Strange. For those of you who haven't watched the show, Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, he plays Sherlock, and he's a big movie star now. And um, John Watson's played by Martin Freeman, who is the Hobbit. Who is also in Love Actually, I Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> uh, he's Bilbo in The Hobbit. Um, and a bunch of other stuff, so yeah. really good cast. Um, the rest of the actors I don't really know from anywhere else, but they're all indispensable. And I, speaking of which, I forgot everyone's favorite character, Mrs. Hudson, who's not their landlady. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not your landlady. But she does have a marijuana problem. She does, which that's way... Well, I wouldn't call it a problem, but... <laughs> that's her weakness. Her, uh, what was it? It's like her vantage point or something. Yeah, something Pressure like point. Anyway, that's that's way bad. That's, that's like episode nine. Anyway, so well, that's... that fact about her. Yes, that is the uh, pilot of Sherlock. Jesus, sorry, the dog. <laughs> <laughs> The dog wants to be fed, and she's over here kicking her food bowl and knocking the camera. Anyway, uh, Sherlock episode one, uh, a study in study in pink, and we'll be back uh, next time. I'm gonna probably post these more than one a day because I want to get them all posted before New Year's. We'll be back with the next video with uh, Sherlock episode two, the Blind Baker, aka God. This episode is pretty good. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Wait. See you later. Bye. <laughs>